Hey, welcome back. Now, the first step in the customer value optimization process is to determine product market fit, right? That's what we have to start off with. In other words, is what you're offering something that your market actually wants? And this is critical, right? I mean, going back to the dating and relationship analogy that we kind of started off to, that, that, that we let off this entire presentation with, uh, you want to make sure that if you're going out, if you want to go out and meet someone, that what you're offering, that, that, that how you look, how you're dressed, how you talk, how you act, that the entire package, the entire offering is something that is appealing to whoever it is that you're wanting to attract, right? And the exact same thing is true here for your market. And a lot of times this doesn't mean necessarily changing our primary, you know, product or service. It simply means articulating the offer in a way that speaks to their desired end result. And this is so critical, so I hope you got that. We want to figure out how can we position, right? How can we speak about your primary flagship product in such a way that it speaks to your prospect's desired end result? Got that? Their desired end result. Far too often in business and in marketing, we get caught up with talking about our products and services. We talk about the features and the benefits and all that stuff. I want to get you out of that. I want to get you talking about it in the context of your market's desired end result. I'm going to show you how to figure out in just a moment what their desired end result is. Before I do that though, I want to kind of get to the what the whole point of marketing is in the first place, right? Um, really kind of distill it down to its bare essence. So I want to introduce you to this person here, all right? This is Mr. Before, all right? And you can tell that Mr. Before is not a happy camper, right? He's kind of got a little sad face on because this is your prospect, your customer, before they've met you, your prospect, your customer, before they have come across your product, your service. So I want you to think about two things. I want you to have two simultaneous thoughts in your head right now. Number one, who is this person? Okay. Who is your perfect prospect? Who's your perfect prospect? Who are they? Male, female, how old are they? Right. Are they generally happy? Are they generally sad? right? Are you taking someone who's happy and you're helping make them even happier? You take somebody who's in a really rough spot, take somebody who's frustrated, right? What are their feelings? All these things. So, so try to keep in your mind, hold in your mind, who is this person right here? Who is Mr. or Mrs. before to your business? Now, the second thought that I want you to hold in your head is what is your primary flagship product or service? What is that product or service that you are most proud of? That thing that you say, this is the thing that if somebody sees this, if they, if they get a hold of this, if I find the right person here and I, and I get a chance to show them what we have to offer, they say, wow, I want it. I got to have it. And they get benefit from it. So what is your primary flagship product or service? Now, if you only have one product or service, if you're in a SaaS business, something like that, then this is obvious. If you have many, then, then just kind of picture in your mind one for now. Okay. Just, just try to picture in mind one, the one that you're really proud of, the one that, that you're most, um, you know, the, the one that, you would sell to your own mother, right? That type of thing. All right. So going back to Mr. Before, right? Your prospect, your customer before. Never forget, all right? Never forget that what we're doing, all right, in business, I don't care what type of business um, that, that you're in, if you're a business owner or if, if you're a marketing consultant and you're working with a client, you know, their job, but whatever it is that we're doing in business, the job of the business person is to move people from a before state to an after state, to move them from a before state where they're kind of ho-hum, where they're not that happy, or maybe where they're happy, but they could be happier to move them from a before state to an after state. That's what we as business owners do. We move people from a before state to an after state. We call this the continuum, the, the, the value continuum. So this is the value continuum and the distance between the before state and the after state is what determines your value, the value that your product or service brings, which effectively determines how much you're able to charge. So if you think about doctors, right? Let's think about a doctor. If I'm a doctor, when I meet people, maybe it's, Hey, you're about to die and then not dead, right? Dead, not dead. Pretty far down a value, value continuum. This like line is, I don't think the TV is quite large enough to justify the continuum that you're moving somebody from as a doctor. It's why doctors are appropriately well paid. Could argue they should be uh, more highly paid. So think about your business. Think about your flagship product or service. How does it move someone down this continuum? How does it transition someone from a before state to an after state? 
because this is what marketing is, okay? Good marketing and good copywriting at the end of the day simply articulates this shift. This shift from the before state to the after state. That's all marketing does at the end of the day. That is the role of marketing, is to articulate this shift. And the way that we do that is by not talking about our products. Right? One of the easiest ways to increase your conversion rate is to stop talking about your product and start talking to this person and allowing them to future cast what life will be like when they are in this state. But to do that, we need to figure out, number one, what is their before state? And number two, what is their after state? And to accomplish that, we need this. This is the before and after grid, and it's exactly what we're going to talk about in the next video.